to it. Let's talk about the three different forms. So first of all, you've got this general form where it's just multiplied out, it's in descending order, and you've got your coefficients a, b, and c in front of the variables, right? So the way you would find the vertex, which is the point where the parabola bends or, or turns, is you would use this formula x equals negative b over 2a, so the opposite of b over 2 times the leading coefficient. So for this example here, I would do the opposite of b, which is negative 4, over 2 times a, which is 2, and so negative 4 over 4 gives us negative 1. Now if I put negative 1 back into my equation for x, I get 2 times negative 1 squared is 2, plus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, plus 1. That comes out to negative 1. So the vertex here is going to be at negative 1, negative 1. The axis of symmetry goes right through that x-coordinate of the vertex. The a value is positive, which tells us that it's opening up like this. And so that's a quick sketch of the graph right there. So this one is in vertex form, okay, and you can see the vertex is going to be at hk, and then the a is the vertical stretch. If it's positive, it's going to open up. If it's negative, it's going to open down. So for this one, we can see that the vertex is at positive 3, positive 1. And notice that uh, this one, this group of the x, has the opposite sign, the opposite effect. This is actually positive 3. If it was x plus 3, then it would be shifting left 3, okay? And then what the a value does, since it's negative, it's going to open down, and the 3 is going to stretch it, which means it's going to be narrower. It's going to go down faster. So this graph's going to look something like this, approximately. And then the last one, this is what's called intercept form. You can also think of it as like a factored form. Okay, it's factored. And by setting the factors, these groups equal to zero, you can solve for the x-intercepts. So if we set this to zero, we get two. If we set this to zero, we get four. And what you want to do is find the halfway point between those two x-intercepts, and that's going to be your line of symmetry. It's also going to be the x-coordinate of your vertex. So in this case, that's x equals three. By putting three back into our equation, we can solve for the y-coordinate of the vertex. So let's do that. Three minus two is one. Three minus four is negative one. And times a half, if we multiply that all out, we get y equals negative one-half. So this is going to be at three negative half right there. And you can see there's our parabola like so. So these are the three forms that you want to memorize and familiarize yourself for for the SAT. So let's go to some examples. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do these on your own. They give us this equation, and it says which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph in the xy plane from which the intercepts can be identified as constants in the equation. So they're telling us they want us to put it into intercept form. That's this form right over here, this third one. Well, you can see this first one is in vertex form. Okay, that's this form right here. This one's like in the general form, so it can't be that one. This one, I'm not even sure what form this is in. It has to be letter C, but I would verify it by doing a couple things. You know, one, you could FOIL this out, like multiply it out, and you can see that, yes, it does match this one here. So all it is is this is the factored form of this, and you can see the x-intercepts are going to be at negative 3, positive 1. You can find the halfway point. That's your axis of symmetry, which is negative 1. And by putting negative 1 back in, you can find the y-coordinate and draw your parabola. Okay, example 2, it says the equation y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8 represents a parabola, which of the following displays the vertex as constants in the equation. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do this one. They give us a few options, you know, and which one do you think it would be? Well, the first of all, this first one looks like it's in the intercept form. See how it's the factored form? So that's not it. This one looks like it's in the vertex form. This one, I'm not sure what form this even represents. Uh, and this one, again, I'm not sure what that even represents. So it looks like it's letter B, but I would confirm by uh, doing a couple different things. One, you could go ahead and you could factor this. You could say this is x minus 4, x minus 2. Okay, so what I've done is I've written it in the intercept form. And you could graph it. You can see it's going to cross at uh, positive 2 if you set this to 0, and positive 4 if you set that to 0. You find that halfway point. That's your axis of symmetry, x equals 3. And by putting it back in, you get negative 1 and positive 1. So if you multiply those together, you get negative 1. So you can see your vertex is going to be right here at 3 comma negative 1, like so. So your parabola is going to look like that. So if we use the vertex form, you can see it's going to be y equals a x minus 3 squared minus 1, right? So it looks like this is in that correct form. You can see the vertex is at 3, negative 1. So letter B is going to be your best answer there. So go ahead and review these uh, three forms of the parabola. Definitely something you want to know for the SAT. And if you have to review these examples, go ahead and do that as well. I'll see you in the next lesson.